15 days to go in the Montana midterm elections till we count the votes. And things are very tight, razor thin. We now have a poll up till now, hardly any polls in the Senate race, but today we have our first poll with 15 days to go. The MTN, the Montana Television Network, and the Montana State University poll. This out today showing that John Tester, the incumbent, with 46.2% of those surveyed favoring Senator Tester. Matt Rosendale, the Republican, with 43.1%. Rick Breckenridge, the Libertarian, 2.6%. Undecided, 6.5%. I'm joined now by our political crew, Dr. David Parker, the MTN political analyst from Bozeman. David, uh, nice to see you. And Mike Dennison, our chief political uh, reporter from Helena. Gentlemen, you've seen the results. David Parker, tell us about this poll. Over 2,000 respondents to the survey. One of the problems in modern polling is uh, folks are increasingly less likely to pick up the phone. So I see a lot of the response rates in cell phone and landline polls at two or three percent, and there's a big concern that that creates a massive response bias. We thought mail polls gave us two advantages. One, we thought we would have a better response rate, and we did. We sent over 10,000 surveys and got more than 2,000 back, a response rate of 20 percent. The second thing is we felt that we'd be better, better able to reach rural Montana and voters in eastern Montana uh, through the mail than through phone and through cell phones. And so we felt that we'd get a better response rate, and we felt that we'd have a less biased sample as a result. Mike Dennison, your response, what jumps out at you with these numbers today? Well, there are a couple of things, and these, these aren't the only things, of course, but one thing was that women are going for Tester much more than Rosendale. So that comes down to voter turnout, which we've talked about a lot. If women turn out more than usual, that's advantage Tester. Another thing I noticed that uh, I didn't really see in, in previous polls is that voters 60 and older were leaning toward Tester, and you know that's an important voting block because that block of voters tends to go out and vote. You know, they're, they're going to be there voting. And the older voters have kind of been the ones trending Republican and supporting President Trump. In this poll, we see those older voters, according to our poll, a little bit leaning toward Tester. And I, if I'm Tester, I'm looking at that. I'm feeling pretty good. David Parker, though, you say there's a great opportunity for Matt Rosendale. Show us and explain what has to turn in the last 15 days for him to end up on top. What's really fascinating about this poll is John Tester has nailed Democrats, 98%. He won 95% of Democrats in 2012, 98% in this poll. Only 82% of, of Republicans are supporting Matt Rosendale. That's room for growth. He's got to hope that those Republicans come home. And if he can convince them uh, through Trump rallies and, and through focusing on that message, uh, he could win this race if he gets his base home. But he also, got, he also has to eke in to that big 30-point margin, roughly 30-point margin that John Tester has with independents. I, I should also say, with a caveat here, is that this poll is designed to replicate the 2016 electorate, which was a, a presidential year. So this is actually probably a conservative estimate uh, for John Tester at this moment, he actually might be slightly up a little bit uh, if the normal midterm effect happens. What about those undecided voters, Mike? It seems like most of them are favoring Republicans. They need to fully turn out for Matt Rosendale to really swing this in his favor. Do you agree? Well, I, I, it, it depends on how the ones who are truly undecided, how they break at the end. And, and, and in the past elections, they've kind of tended to break Republican. You know, one thing we should keep in mind also with this poll, this was conducted the last couple of weeks of September, the first week of October. You know, since then, there's been a lot of political developments. And of course, the Kavanaugh hearings, and then also the president himself coming to Montana once again. And the question is, what is the effect of that? The conviction of wisdom is that the Kavanaugh hearing has kind of energized Republican voters, and the purpose of the president's visit is to energize them as well, to get them to turn out. Again, we're going back to turnout. But there's also the, the possibility that the president coming here and speaking out as much as he have, you know, that could energize Democratic voters as well. But he's certainly going to antagonize them. So it's really a question of what is the effect of things that have happened since that poll? Has it tightened up or not? The margin of error on our poll is 2%, so very thin. It's going to have to uh, break uh, positive in both uh, fashions for either of these uh, uh, candidates to win. Later on tomorrow, we'll talk about the U.S. House race, and later in the week, we'll also tell you about our survey and what it said about the initiatives in Montana. Dr. Parker, Mike Dennison, thanks for joining us.
Thanks for having us.